Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Oh my word, I am so stinking excited about today's DIY using these wire wreath forms that are in the form of a witch's hat. Dollar Tree is carrying these right now for Halloween and oh my word, when I saw them, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them. Now, if your store didn't get these in stock or you are watching this video outside of Halloween, I will be showing you an alternative to these wire wreath forms during the tutorial. This is such a fun, versatile piece. It can really be done to suit any decor style and I am really excited to be bringing it to you. Today is part one of a two-part series that I will be bringing to you using these wire wreath forms or the alternative. I can't wait to show you what I have in store for you for today. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let's do some DIY on a budget. I love this DIY. I think you're gonna love it too. Getting started for this DIY, you're gonna need three of these witch's hat wire wreath forms. Using some wire cutters, we're gonna remove the brim of the hat. And you can very easily cut through the wire just by putting a fair amount of pressure on and just kind of wiggling and twisting and doing your thing with your wire cutters, whatever it is you do to cut through it, that's what you're gonna do and it'll easily just kind of break apart. You're gonna start off by doing it on each side of the top of the hat here because we only want to loosen the sides because once we loosen these sides, we're gonna go ahead and cut where this center wire is at the bottom of the wire, leaving the center wire attached to the top of the hat. Once you've removed it, you should be left with this. Taking the second hat, we're gonna cut a bit higher up on the hat, making this shorter. And so to do that, I'm gonna start off by cutting right here where I guess this third wire is from the top on each side. And like I said, you can see here that this breaks apart pretty easily with some wire cutters. You can get wire cutters at the Dollar Tree. Once you've got the bottom half removed, you'll be left with this. Then we're gonna go ahead and just cut another piece of wire off because we need a wire for the bottom center of the top of this hat. To attach the wire, you can easily place some hot glue on it and just attach it right to the center there. If you wanna do it with some electrical tape or duct tape, you can do that too. You could even use a popsicle stick if you really wanted to. I'm just using what I have here because it's gonna work and it's gonna get the job done. And you'll just wanna reinforce it with a lot of hot glue just to make sure it doesn't wiggle around. For the last and final hat, we're gonna go three down instead of, oh, I guess the last one I said three down, we were supposed to go four down. And so now we're gonna go three down from the top, making it even a bit smaller. And so I'm sure you see where I'm going with this. I cut it off of each side. Again, I took a scrap piece of the wiring and I'm gonna attach it to the center bottom of our tree. Now, if you're watching this DIY outside of Halloween, and you wanna do this, or it is Halloween time and you just can't get your hands on those witch's hat wire wreath forms, here's an alternative using Dollar Tree's foam board or a trifold display board. You're gonna make a triangle, three different triangles in three different sizes that resemble this one here. Then you're gonna take a box cutter with a new razor. You're gonna cut those triangles out. And at the bottom of these trees, you're gonna use some popsicle sticks and you're gonna hot glue it to the bottom, giving you the tree. For this next part of the DIY, I will be using this jelly roll with these fall and harvest fabric strips that I am loving. I picked this up at Walmart and I wanna say it was like five or six dollars. There is a lot of fabric strips here and so it was worth it to me to buy this because there are a lot of DIYs that I could do using these strips. I picked out three of the strips, different patterns, 
And for this first tree, I'm going to start off by using this tan and gray truck fabric. I am all about the red truck, the blue truck, the tan truck, the black truck, any color truck. I just love it because it is so like rustic and farmhouse-y. Is that a word? As you can see, I'm going to take these strips and I am going to glue them across the wreath form. I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. I found that that was the neatest, easiest way to do this instead of starting from the top and working your way down because I wanted the strips to overlap at the bottom as you can see that I'm doing. I knew when I saw these wreath forms exactly what I wanted to do with them, but then when it came down to trying to find the holiday fabrics, it was really hard. And so I was only able to find these holiday harvest and Christmas fabrics in these jelly rolls at Walmart. And I am all about finding alternatives when you can't find what you need for a project. And so these jelly rolls are going to work perfect. In covering these trees, it really only took one to one and a half fabric strips per tree. The smaller one actually only took one fabric strip to completely cover it. The two larger ones, again, took one to one and a half. So by the time you've covered three of your trees, you've only used five fabric strips which means you've got a ton of fabric strips left over to do more DIYs or make more trees. Once I've got my fabric glued on, you better believe it, I am going to distress this and I'm gonna do it using some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain and using a stiffer paintbrush. This is actually a makeup brush, but who cares? It does the same thing. Somebody once said, not too long ago that farmhouse is dirty. Who said that? That's right, my daughter Kayla. Farmhouse is dirty, dirty as farmhouse. And so she's right. I feel like when you add distress to it, it gives it a story. It, it's been places, your piece. Where has it been? Where was it stored? And then you just came across this piece, this treasure, and you're pulling it out and it's got some age to it and character. I love that. That is what distressing means to me when I distress it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and distress this along the edges on the top and the bottom of this and I might even add some splotches in the middle just so the middle doesn't look so stark compared to the outside. Now this would not be one of my farmhouse creations if I did not finish it off with one of my twine bows using Dollar Tree's twine and making it several strands thick. I love adding twine bows to it. I think it's a simple embellishment and I feel like it just adds to it. I love twine, I love burlap, I love distress. Heck, I love everything that there is about farmhouse. And so once I've got my bow tied, I'm gonna go ahead and top my tree off with a twine bow. And there we have tree one of three trees. I also want to show you that Walmart does from time to time have these fat quarters by Create It as well. This is a Christmas one. I wasn't able to find any for the fall and harvest uh, time. And so I did pick up a couple of these for future DIYs, but I wanted to show you if you want to use a fat quarter, you can easily just, again, place your wire wreath form on your fat quarter and just cut about an inch out from your wire wreath form so that way you have that excess fabric to fold over and glue to the back. For this DIY, I will be incorporating some of these wood drawers. And again, this is one of those DIYs where we're gonna utilize both the drawer itself and the outside. And so you're gonna need three of them. I'm gonna use one bigger one and two of the drawers themselves. To stain these, I will be using one of my favorite methods, liquid shoe polish, and I will be using a brown and a black liquid shoe polish. You can get this shoe polish at just about any dollar store. You can remove the foam applicator because I don't like to apply the shoe polish using that because usually when you do it to wood, it sticks from the foam and there's splinters on the wood. And using a paintbrush, just go ahead and apply it. You can see that a little goes a long way. I really love using shoe polish as a stain alternative because it's budget friendly, it's way cheaper than stain. And using a brown and a black shoe polish, I can achieve a beautiful color walnut brown that I love. Or you can use the black and get that real nice rustic steel wood looking color. Once I apply this brown, it is going to turn a bit orange. And I don't know why this brown has an, I guess, a orange undertone to it. 
And so to kind of mute that orange out, I will go back over this with the black shoe polish, therefore giving me a gorgeous walnut brown that I am obsessed with. And because I think I have another week of warm weather left, I'm gonna put these outside and help speed up the drying process. I tell you, it's only about a week away before I start using my oven again. Now taking some of Dollar Tree's foam, I am, I'm using a knife. Please, if you are a little one watching this video, do not do this. You need to let your mommies or daddies do this for you. I'm using a knife because I get a nice clean cut and I'm gonna cut this up into several pieces, then using some hot glue, I'm gonna hot glue it to the bottom of the drawers. It is that time of year where Dollar Tree is stocking the reindeer moss. Now this is a moss that I really like, and so when it comes into stock, I like to grab a few bags of it because I really like working with it a bit better than I like working with the brown, regular dryer moss that you can get at Dollar Tree year round. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cover up that foam then I'm gonna take my tree, I'm gonna place some hot glue on the metal spike that we left, and I am going to place this right into the foam, right through the moss. Now you will see that there is that decorative hole punch of the butterfly on the back side. I placed it on the back side on purpose, so when you look on the front, we've got just the solid wood base. Now, over the last couple of years, I have been saving these wood DIY stickers that the Dollar Tree carries for every holiday. I pick up a pack or two every time I see them and I just keep them in this bag so when I need them, I can use them. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take this orange pumpkin because I'm making these trees for fall and harvest and I thought that this would make for the perfect embellishment on the front of these. What are these called? They're just wood pots. Yeah, wood pots. And because I didn't have two solid pumpkins, I am going to incorporate a glitter one onto the plaid one and I think that that will add just a bit of character to this one as well. From time to time I do believe that less is more but in this case I wasn't feeling it. I just felt like these trees were a bit too plain so I dove back into my stash of these DIY wood stickers and I thought that these maple leaves would be an adorable addition to this tree. And for the other trees, I went ahead and used the colored glitter pumpkins for this one. And for the brown truck, I went with just the solid raw wood pumpkins. are these trees and who says that trees are only for Christmas they're for any time of year I say I think that these are a fun quick easy budget friendly piece that you can add to your decor that can really be done to suit any decor style I put my Christmas ones away for now and they will be making their appearance right around Thanksgiving time when all my fall and harvest decor comes down and the Christmas stuff goes up make sure to stay tuned for part two of this two-part series I cannot wait to show you what I do next with these witches hats. And again, if you cannot get that wreath form, there will be an alternative in the next DIY as well. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes, because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, and bye for now, everybody. <laughs>